What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We're gonna be looking at this guy. This is the JJK84 from Epo Maker. Yeah, so I'm gonna like build it up. It comes as a bare bones kit and then I'm gonna like build it, do some mods and stuff like that and then we will do that kind of thing. Uh, I might do a little bit talking segment about this keyboard and how I feel about it and stuff like that later on in the video. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. I'll see you guys down there. All right, guys, so here it is, the Epo Maker JJK86. All right, so here's the packaging. There's some instructions and a little bit of warranty stuff. I'll say do hold on to it in case you forget the function keys. All right, so there's some PE foam. I'll show the cable that comes with it. To be honest, I'm not impressed with this cable. I was like, what the, what is going on with this cable? All right, so here's the Epo Maker. This is a 75% keyboard. This is the frosted acrylic one. There's the back of it. It does have the little dongle guy for wireless. It does have Bluetooth and it is wired. All right, let's look into this. Do you have it upside down for some reason? But yeah, it is hot swappable. It does five and three pin and it has south facing, no, north facing LEDs. All right, so there is your USB-C cable port. And your stabilizers. I did go stock with this, so I didn't mess with that a whole lot just because I wanted to try out the stock ones. So far, impressed. Editor KV here. Uh, like I said, I do like the stabs. I will say the one on the enter key was a little off. And for some reason, it just, I tried fixing it. And I'll be honest, these stabs are really uh, interesting because there's nothing to clip. They're already flat. Even like it has the legs going on both sides and there is nothing to clip. It's really uh, interesting. Uh, again, I, uh, yeah. I don't know what to do with them. If you guys have any suggestions, I might just do uh, the Band-Aid uh, Holy Mod type situation in there to see if that helps with the rattle, but it still rattles quite a bit on the Enter key. The rest of them are fine. Not, I might end up just changing out the whole set of stabs and getting like something else, but we will see. Alrighty, so let's continue. All right, we're gonna crack this guy open. Get all these screws out of the way. We'll say this thing had a lot of screws, so do be prepared to like just spend some time on it. We're gonna pop it open. So there is your PCB, your plate. This is the connection for the daughter board. There's the bottom of the case. And this is just foreshadowing, but that little switch I'm messing with to make sure where if you go with like the same kind of mod I went with that, that is actually going all the way through. If not, it will not work properly. Unless you just want to hold it to one setting and that's fine with you, but I wouldn't advise leaving it that way.
All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I got some EVA foam that I have pre-cut already, and we're just gonna stick this into the case. We're gonna make, we're just gonna use this to uh, dampen the sound, the case sound. So. Then I'm gonna make the cutout for the cable for the battery and all that kind of thing uh, here in a second. So here I'm getting the cutout for the switch, which again, do make sure you do that right. As far as the plate in the PCB is concerned, I am going to go with the stock foam that they put in it on the PCB. I'm going to go with an electrical tape mostly because I'm a little concerned about the battery and it catching fire or anything like that with the uh, standard tape mod. At where we're gonna reconnect the daughter board do make sure you get those pins on right I know if you've been doing this for a minute it kind of seems like a duh but if you're new to this always make sure even if you need to get like magnifying glasses or your phone out because if that isn't connected properly you end up having to just do it again it was at this moment that he knew he <laughs> Alright, so at this point I realized that that switch is not connected properly and that it's not going to work properly. So I'm going to have to take this apart again and try to get that fixed. Alright, now we're done. We got it fixed. We're going to put some Gateron yellows, uh, milky yellows in this. And there we go. We got our switches in. Honestly, it looks nice with the Gateron yellows, but I do have a little bit of an asterisk later, and we'll talk about that when we get there. All right, we're gonna do some XVX PBT keycaps. I think this one's called the Forest. And seriously, I love this keycap set. It looks amazing. All right, then we have it turned on. Look at that. All right, so I have been using this keyboard for at least like two, three months now uh, since I recorded all that stuff. Yeah, it's been about roughly two months. I will say uh, I'm liking it. Well, the one like I have a couple of things that I'm not a big fan of. And uh, I'll be honest, when it comes to this channel, I'm still not sure where I'm going with this. Uh, like I want to do tech stuff. I want to do other things besides keyboards, but right now we're just in like keyboard space. I want to do some audiophile stuff. Uh, I don't have much stuff to go on, but there are some things I want to talk about and just share. So it is one of those things that we'll just do that when we get there. Um, but for the time being, I will say, I. I like the keyboard. I like the feel for it. I didn't really think I'd be into the whole 75% uh, setup or layout, but I'm really liking it. And it's actually become one of my favorite layouts. Uh, I really thought that I'd be stuck on like a TKL thing for the longest time. I did try that at USO 60%. I will revisit the 60% space, but for now that's kind of just like on, on the side. But for now, this 75% layout, I'm liking it. I get my arrow keys. I get some like other keys that you would get like on say a TKL. And it's not as bulky. Uh, I did bring out my, my Techware 87 Phantom 
a couple days ago just to like feel the difference and yeah that just feels bulky by comparison at this point it eats up a lot more space on my desk i do have a pretty decent sized desk in all reality especially once i clean off all my stuff off of it i have plenty of room to move around to use my mouse and all that kind of thing but at the same time the more room i have for things or whatever the better it feels and i will say the 75 percent layout is really nice i like it I'm enjoying it. The only gripes I have with this keyboard is that it does drop the Bluetooth from time to time uh, from just over usage. Like if I go like two, three days with using the Bluetooth, the Bluetooth kind of gets all weird and wonky. I got to go back to wired. And then after like about an hour or so of using wired, it does actually go back to normal and Bluetooth is available and I can use it again. So there is that. And the other one is the battery life on this is not the greatest. I think I can get because like one of my favorite games to play is satisfactory. So you guys might hear me talk about a lot of that because that's where I spend most of my gaming space in or even GTA from time to time. Me and my wife like to play GTA and stuff like that together and we'll just run around doing dumb things. So uh we'll say so the battery life on this runs roughly about maybe two and a half hours. Uh roughly I really end up having it wired most of the time. I just like the Bluetooth because it turns off whenever I'm not using them the keyboard itself and when and that's another one I'm finding that's weird. If you leave it wired, even if your computer is not on, the keyboard itself, the lights will come on if you just accidentally press a key or something falls on it. Like, say I left like a cup and the cup tilts over and like it falls onto the keyboard and it hits a key, it goes off. And I will say empty cups because if you have full cups, like I actually keep this guy. Right now it's empty, but I keep this guy on my desk just because gotta stay hydrated and whatnot. Put some ice and water in there and you're good to go. So, um, we'll say that is, uh, very interesting that it does that. Uh, again, I'm new to the whole keyboard space, so I'm just kind of enjoying myself. I, I, most of the keyboards that I got coming up and stuff like that, uh, you'll see as I progress through them are a lot older, but it's also cause I'm new to this and I'm enjoying myself. And there are just things that like, also a lot of the more new, new stuff is wildly out of my price range. Uh, and that's another thing that I'm kind of going on the super budget i guess is what you consider it because what i keep hearing is budget to me sounds nowhere near budget but then again i know how expensive some keyboards can get so that comparison is unfair uh but yeah so that's kind of one thing i'm kind of just having an issue with is just the battery life on this isn't the greatest so bit of a bummer but at the same time i mean it's more like depend i guess it depends on what you're doing if you're just like typing or you're trying to write out a paper or something that's one thing if you're gaming uh you you constantly have your hands on your keyboard in gaming uh you that wasd you just you live that whole key set and stuff like that so that is something to keep in mind if you are looking to buy this. Uh, I will put some workable links down below because when I purchased this, this was the last one they had in stock. Hopefully I can get you like a link that has something a little bit more in stock right now. All right, and as far as the keycaps go, this is the four set from XVX. They claim it is an XVX profile. I. I get, uh, like even doing any little bit of research on this, everybody says it's just an XDA profile with a curvature. So take it for what it is. Personally, I just like the style. I like the feel. I like the sound that they give you and everything and all that. So it is one of those things of like, it just, you know, to each his own. Uh, again, this is just something I'm still getting into the space of keyboards and it feels like an excuse I'm making up, but at the same time, I'm just enjoying myself learning about this stuff. And it's just, and it's something I, I like, I'm one of those people that likes to work with their hands a lot. So the more I get to like get in depth and touch things and actually get a feel for what I'm doing and stuff like that, the more joy I get out of it. So, uh, like I said, they claim is an XVX profile from what I see on a lot of like forums, like on Reddit and stuff like that, it just says that it's an XDA with a bit of a curvature. So, you know, either way, I like them. I like the look of it. I didn't think I'd be into this whole green white kind of look to it. Here, let me show you guys, bring this guy up here. But yeah, I didn't think I'd be into that, but I am so into that. I'm liking it just really with this dark green and the white, it's very toothpastey or something like that, but I'm liking it. I don't know why, don't know. 
can't really explain myself we'll say it did take me a second to find which ones went in this row right here so do be aware that you you gotta get that kind of like right and stuff like that Alrighty, so with all that being said i'm gonna take you over to uh the the uh the typing test and all that kind of thing and then we'll wrap up the video all right thank you guys for joining me as always so here's where we're doing the uh the sound test and you guys can get to hear that All right, so in this instance, we are changing our the switches. Uh, I come to learn that I'm not ready for linears. Uh, I'm full on tactile gang still, and I just am gonna do that and let it be. So I searched it out for the Echo Jelly Sponges, and unfortunately, I did not record footage for like the actual keycap test but i did record the sound so at least you'll get some audio with those with the switches as well so this is it 